Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm James. I'm a kernel engineer working at EC2. And the discussion that I'd like to have today is around memory over subscription when we're doing PCI device assignment to virtual machines, specifically looking at a way to do memory over subscription um, while not depending on more advanced hardware techniques such as PRI, but trying to use a lightweight cooperative technique to be able to do memory over subscription. So roughly, we're going to look at uh, overview of the current state of device assignment and memory over subscription, then discuss two aspects of the proposal, which is basically making IO MMU page tables dynamic by hooking them into MMU notifiers, and also adding a this lightweight guest cooperative technique to ensure that um, page is always resident before attempting the, before the device attempts a DMA transaction. So the way that um, DMA-capable PCI devices are assigned today. This rules the in as we in the IMU FD presentation. This walks the whole user space um, address range of the DMA which is being assigned to the device. Pins all of that memory, so faults it all in, and sets up the IMU page tables um, when the uh, IO control is invoked, so it sets it up all up front. As far as I can tell, this is done for two main reasons. The one is simplicity, so you just have to set up your IO MMU page tables once and then again. You're never going to encounter the imagery, nothing holds the so there is prior art, again, as mentioned in the IMMUFD talk here, around address translation, service, and page request interface for device faults. Um, but PRI support seems limited. It doesn't seem that well plumbed into VFI at the moment, and I'm just also not sure how prolific it is in hardware. It still seems quite exotic. And so it, it seems kind of tailored to Intel graphics at the moment, and it'll likely become likely be a while before it becomes more broadly supported. The other relevant hardware technique is around shared virtual addressing, which was also mentioned in IOMMUFD, where the CPU and IOMMU share the same page tables. Um, and this is great if you've got PRI support, but if you don't, you actually probably don't want to share those page tables exactly. Uh, I think it might be preferable to actually modify them in a controlled sequence, um, the, keep them independent. And we'll get to that a little bit later. So in summary, the, the, there are lots of devices out there, some which take um, support PRI and can take page faults, but most don't. And I'm looking here for a software technique that doesn't rely on these um, hardware functionality in order to be able to do memory over subscription. So, the first part of this is about how we keep the how we make the IOMMU page tables dynamic, um, similar to what we get with shared virtual addressing. So I'm suggesting a new IO control, VFI map DMA unpinned, and this basically does no allocation up front. Uh, it just sets up the PC, the VFIO data structures and assigns PCI bars and such, but doesn't prefault any addresses. It doesn't set up IOMMU page tables. VFIO would then hook into MMU notifiers so that as the user space page tables are updated, VFIO, VFIO would get notified via the change PTE or invalidate range callbacks. And then VFIO could come along and um, make the same modifications to the IOMMU page tables to keep them in sync. There are some challenges with this. At the moment, change PTE is not used that extensively. It seems to only be used for copy on write faults. Um, and we need to be very strict about these MMU notifiers now. If we're basically driving IO MMU page table updates, we need to always notify so that VFIO can keep its page tables in sync. And similarly, we should never invalid call it invalidate um, uh, notify us furiously because we'll actually be tearing down pages now. So we need to be very sure about these things. So there are some challenges, but um, yeah, and there are some fiddly things to sort out. But I think in theory, we could get to a stage where VFIO is reliably notified through MMU notifiers and can keep its page tables in sync with the user space page tables. 
So once notified, what would VFI do? Well, I'm suggesting a new IOMMU domain ops callback, remap PTE, and VFIO could invoke this remap PTE callback, um, and the IOMMU driver would then walk the user space page tables and update the relevant entries in the, um, walk the IOMMU page tables and update the relevant entry in the IOMMU page table through this callback. Um, and with that, the page tables are in sync. So there are some challenges here around page table, so, uh, yeah, page table entry size changes, specifically things like THP coalescing or splitting while you've got DMP transactions and the client starts to get quite scary. Maybe you could solve that. Maybe you could just say you don't support things like HP and memory over subscribed assigned regions. Yes. So, okay. So that's the first part of this, which is around on the device and page table. Page table. The second part is around the interface to ensure we never have any faults. But let me just take a break here just to, to get to solicit some feedback on this first part. I'm making a really loud hum. Mm -hmm. I hear the hum too. Yeah, like that one. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So I mean, we have a lot of experience with what you've just described. We've done it in RDMA for a long time. What you describe as HMM, right? When you say MMU notifiers, you, you kind of mean the HMM piece of it. The, the reason it's never worked for the IOMMU is that you can't make it coherent, right? The, the way the IOMMU notifiers work, they really, really are intended to be used with the invalidate start end, which means you stop touching it, the MM goes and does something, like maybe it swaps it, maybe it copies it, you know, it, it does something where it assumes the memory isn't changing anymore, and then you get your invalidate kind of end, and then, then you get the possibility to put it back in your device. So if you can't pause the device, you fundamentally can't use these techniques. And the IOMMU doesn't give you any way to pause the device unless you have PRI. Um, Not clear to me why you need to pause the device. Because if your contract is that, and this is maybe the next part where we ensure that you never attempt to DMA to a non-resident page, but if your contract is that page will always be faulted in on the CPU side before you attempt a DMA transaction, then so long as that that IOMMU page table entry is materialized at the same time as the CPU page table entry, I'm not seeing the need for the pausing. Oh, you don't. You, 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 well, no. do is bidirectional. Well, I, mm -hmm. if you're doing that, you don't need MMU notifiers, you don't need HMM. What you're implementing is VIOMMU, where, you, where the guest tells you to map, and then you map, and then the guest tells you to unmap, and you unmap. So yeah. you have a defined time period. So you don't need MMU notifiers to implement that at all. We implement that today. It's just really slow. Right. So if you have that synchronous call, and again, we're maybe getting into the second part here a bit, but if you have, the, if the guest is actually doing hyper calls or something like that to say, I am going to map this page, you're right. Then, then you can hook that into VFO directly. But I'm trying to suggest a more lightweight approach that actually the guest doesn't need to do any, typically doesn't need to do any VM exits, any calls into the hypervisor. It's a, so long as the page is resident on the CPU side before it initiates the DMA transaction. So how, how do you make it resident on the CPU side without a hypercall? Yeah, that is the that's, second That's part. the next call. Cool. Okay. Just one more. Okay. Sure. Can you hear me now? It was basically the same thing. It's, uh, it, it strikes me that you don't have um, a good guarantee so far, you'll, you'll explain that, that You'll fault in on the CPU first, and and without that, you know, no maybe notifiers. And I, I mean, cool. I'm okay. with Jason on that because the, the 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 normal paradigm, normal or whatever the definition of normal, um, is that you would use virtual I am virtual. have to say, hey, burn that this. Whatever definition. I think you're right. Okay. So where the MMU notifiers are hooked in, and when um, CPU page table entries are materialized, we'll also materialize page table entries on the IO MMU page tables. So how do we now ensure that a DMA transaction is never initiated to a unmapped page? Um, 
again, there's a prior art here around uh, ATS and PRI, but we are looking for a more generic solution that doesn't require these hardware techniques. As mentioned, um, we can indeed use um, VI or MMUs, but these would be expensive, potentially requiring VM exits and notifications on every unmapping and remapping. So I'm trying to look for a more lightweight solution here. Um, and the suggestion is basically ensure that the guest kernel does a CPU access to the page before considering it DMAable. So um, to ensure that it's resident, basically. Um, if the page is already resident, then this is just a simple CPU access. If the page is not yet resident, perhaps it's lazy allocation, perhaps it's been swapped out, then the CPU access will trigger a um, page fault. You'll um, trap into KVM. MMU, uh, MM will allocate the page, and via the MMU notifiers, it will then update the IO MMU page tables as well. So as part of that CPU access, you ensure that the page table is resident both in CPU and in IO MMU page tables. And just a simple CPU access is good enough if you're only doing lazy allocation. If you want to be able to support host side swap as well, then you could do this with a shared bitmap where the guest kernel would set a bit in this bitmap when it um, maps the page for DMA. And the host would then need to consult this bitmap before attempting a swap out operation. And if the bit is set, it knows like I'm not allowed to swap this out. The guest could potentially be using it for DMA. Um, some careful coordination is needed here to avoid races. So on the host side, you would first zap the CPU page table entry, then consult the bitmap, and only if it's clear, then zap the IOMMU page table and return the page. And that's why I mentioned at the start, we may not want to use SVA and actually keep them strictly in sync because we would want to sequence these teardown operations quite carefully to ensure there are no race conditions. Um, there are a few places in the guest, we could expose it as an IOMMU. It's not really an IOMMU. I think it's the wrong abstraction. We could attempt to hook into DMA map ops. Again, we would end up doing something that looks and feels quite a lot like an IOMMU, leading to a whole bunch of callbacks. Um, my suggestion is actually to hook into the DMA direct function. So as part of mapping and unmapping pages for DMA, it just goes through these DMA direct functions. And inside there, we could invoke the uh, callbacks to this device driver, which would be responsible for doing the CPU access to ensure it's resident and doing the bitmap um, maintenance. So we have a few options here. The last aspect is around how this page pinning device should be exposed by the host and discovered by the guest. It's a pretty lightweight device. Essentially, it just needs to be discovered so that the guest knows, OK, I need to do this. I need to register these callbacks and do the CPU access as part of the DMA mapping sequence. And um, perhaps a few registers as well so that the guest can share this bitmap with the host. But it's a really lightweight device. The important thing is it needs to be set up really early before any DMA operations are performed so that the, the hooks can be installed. Um, again, a few options here. We could piggyback on an existing device like Vertio, or we could add a new device to ACPI. I don't really know what the best approach for exposing the device would be. Cool. So in summary, we've looked at two aspects of this problem. The one is getting the guest this lightweight protocol where the guest typically doesn't encounter a VM exit but ensures that the pages are resident before initiating a DMA operation. And we'll also and I have another question. We could guess you and you with this functionality and this description of the we did need to sprinkle some more and you notified to get it to it. Um, the next step would be to the relation to the IMD that you were speaking about in the IMU talk. Um, and yeah, if people are keen on this approach, it would, next would be to send out an RFC for making VFI dynamic and start the discussion on how to expose the device file. Thank you.
just have a uh, quick question. You mentioned that touching a page is lightweight compared to hypercore on the architecture I care about. That's not the case. I mean, it's exactly the same cost. I mean, you basically take a full exit all the way to, to the, the rest of the kernel to perform the go. To access a page. Yeah, if it is not that. If it's not that. No, of course not. And that's the 99.999% Yeah. But you st if, if you want that page, you, so you, you have two things. You have, you access the page to guarantee that you, you, will, you will be able to map it in your, in your IMMU. You have to do that, whatever you do. But you need to perform that mapping once. So why do you bother having this infrastructure? Whilst you could have done a hypercore that has the same cost as the initial mapping and pin the page in the first place. So pages get mapped and unmapped quite often, right? If you're doing, for example, if you're allocating pages for page cache to DMA block devices into, you're mapping and unmapping pages all over the address space. And you don't want to turn every single one of those map and unmaps into VM exits and hypercalls. The best thing would be if the first access to one of those pages encounters a page fault, um, and then from then on, you're basically just setting and clearing this bit as you unmap it because it's now a resident page. So only the first access that actually makes it resident requires a VM exit. From then, you can map, map and unmap in a very lightweight manner without any VM exits. If you expose a virtual IMMU, every time you do that mapping and unmapping, you need a VM exit and some flushing probably as well. And that's the whole thing. We're trying to optimize the this, this not doing VM exits in general case. Only do it when you really have to, when you really need to fault that page in because it's not resident. So you are, you are basically a lightweight page lock. So you, you effectively have a lightweight page lock. Right. Well, it's, it has nothing to do with mappings. It has to do with page, with locking the page. Exactly, but it's, but it's locking hooked into the DMA mapping um, functions because those are already invoked by a device driver when it makes a page DMAable. So that's why it's a really useful place to hook in. Super, uh, super simple to hook in there, I think. You want the box? Here we go. <laughs> uh, if somebody else wants to speak, please go ahead. But um, it, it strikes me that this box does not like me. Too I'm too close to the other boxes, to the speakers. OK. Um, um, the, it strikes me that it is exactly what you, you said. You've created a, a light. OK. Let's try again. Uh, <laughs> that you've created a lightweight way. I, yeah, I did that. I thought that would made it worse. <laughs> Oh gosh, um, a lightweight way to lock a page, right? And and to me, that kind of suggests that what you've you've created here is is part of the KVM layer in a sense, and maybe less part of the IOMMU side. Because I, I am thinking about your question here: how do how do we model this thing? And in a very real way, it's the KVM like connect a KVM page table to an IOMMU domain that. that specifically to avoid the, the PRI requirement uh, and that that might give you some some guidance on how the, the modeling can work mm. for you um, so yeah just one comment there I didn't necessarily want to make it KVM specific I don't see a reason why you couldn't use a similar approach for DPDK although my focus has been on the virtualization case uh, um, yeah because it makes the modeling easier is kind of my answer. Yeah. Like we, we already want to connect KVM and especially if you could do the SVA, like where you could actually share the KVM page table. Like if you could figure out the way to make the locking work where that could be possible, like that would be really, really appealing to say that we could share the KVM page table. KVM takes care of all the MMU notifier stuff because it already knows how. And all you're adding is, is basically page locking on top of that somehow, lightweight page locking. That, that I think that would be really appealing because at the KVM page table today and, and a lot of architectures. But we don't have a solution to the
What I'm still trying to, it sounds like you're suggesting that we, we still pursue the page table sharing in this case. And my point, I, I think that unless you actually have PRI, proper page table sharing is not desirable because especially on the teardown sequence, when you want to, you want to stagger this, the sequence. You first want to zap it on the CPU page table, then consult your locking bitmap and then tear it down. And I think for that reason, you actually don't want the real page table sharing unless you have proper PRI. Yeah, that's why I kind of left it open. If you could figure out a way to do the locking without without that, then that would be great. Yeah. Um, I'm just reluctant to duplicate all that MME notifier code. It's um... What's the duplication? What are you concerned about? I'm already maintaining the And fundamentally, we are relying on the guests to be well behaved. That's why I've kind of put the title cooperative here. So we expect them not to be malicious and go and like pin all their memory at once. But you're right that 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 is probably a problem. But you know, what what do you do in that case? And I guess your options are you can um, terminate a VM or attempt to detect this early and live migrate before your memory. For they all want to pin all their memory all the time. I'm not sure there is a good way out of that. Um, yeah, don't have a solid answer to that. You could extend the, the, the protocol a bit and implement some kind of a pinning coder for, for each VM. That, that, that sounds super complicated. The, the question is basically the same as, what if my oversubscribed user space application that has like an MMAP of 10 gig, what if it touches every page in a busy loop, right? It could and just kills you. And, and the same thing applies to non-device assigned VMs that are overcommitted. What if my VM goes and basically just has one thread looping through every 4K page of that guest and touching every single one? Well, tough luck, right? That, that, that there's nothing you can do um, except throttling it or killing it. And this is exactly the same answer. Yeah, you would be the VM kill victim then if you're doing that. It's not a, it's not a device specific problem is what I'm saying. It's it well, is a it, bigger it, artifact. It's not sure that, that you get killed when you do this. It could also be that someone else get killed, gets killed. So, Correct. right? And then you have a victim who did nothing wrong and the bad behavior continues. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm failing to understand the difference between a CPU based page touching mechanism and the device based page touch mechanism. It's, it's the same problem. So I don't think we need to build anything special for device-based uh, pinning because it's exactly the same set of, of, of rules you want to apply. And also this would be like a pretty unusual case that you would be detect, right? If that bitmap really is all set, there's something wrong with that guest because that is not a typical way of doing DMA, right? Typically you will, you'll scatter DMA across your address space, but things will only be mapped for a shortish interval. Um, as as page cache pages are allocated. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on your workload. Do you want a mic? Sure. Like we, we know of workloads where 90% of the RAM is pinned permanently. Right? Database workloads, right. specialty workloads, HPC okay. workloads. It, it depends on your workload. You're talking about a yeah. very special workload for you when you say that. Well, I, I'm actually trying to solve the general case. And I agree that there will be classes of workloads which are very DMA heavy and will pin a lot of their memory, and those would not be a good candidate for, for a memory oversubscribed environment, actually. I'm looking for the more general case here, your, your typical, whatever a typical workload is, but something that is not accessing DMA all the time to its whole address box. What DMA devices do you imagine installing in the device, in the, in the guest? Block device and network device. Not accelerators, no. Yeah, typically again, accelerators and 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 those are your high 
high performance workloads and you typically wouldn't be running them in a Nova subscribed environment. Yeah. Just uh, trying to understand, how do you tell the difference between a guest access that is just a random memory read from an application versus a guest access that's meant to pin some memory? Sure. I am, I'm not trying to actually tell the difference between those. Basically, what I'm saying is by keeping the IOMMU page tables in sync with the CPU page tables through notifiers, so long as something has been faulted in on the CPU side, it will also be DMAable. And you keep those in sync. And it's only on the swap out part that you need to then go and look at this, this locking or pinning bitmap and decide, am I allowed to swap this out or not? It will be very rare that you have a cold page. I mean, uh, yeah, that is also DMA. You know, typically, if your page is mapped for DMA, it's kind of a hot page. It's being accessed by the CPU. But, but that, that's the locking. Again, I don't want to say typically, but that's the locking mechanism. Yeah. So you keep them in sync, consult the bitmap on the swap out or tear down path. That's my time. Thanks very much.